crushing is the first process in comminution, right? So com crushing is a subset of comminution, uh, and comminution is a process of turning big rocks into really little rocks. Um, so crushing is typically uh, from the size it's blasted to down to uh, typically um, as fine as say six or seven mil unless you're uh, wet uh, wet screening in which case you can perhaps get a bit finer than that you can probably get down to about uh, uh, two or three mil if you're wet crushing if you're wet wet screening sorry but dry screening becomes uh, more and more difficult with finer screens because they tend to blind over and typically uh, you you sizing screens don't get much finer than um, about 10 millimeters and preferably a bit bigger than that um, in the um, in the hard rock um, quarry industry like for aggregates around perth uh, dry screening's done down to about uh, five mil so the the dust is typically um, uh, pulled off on um, on slotted panels or uh, using uh, very fine wire um, you can do piano wire screening right down to about two mil but uh, it's it's hard work because the piano wire wears out pretty quick and so so on and so forth so um, as a practical thing in the mining industry, we tend not to go smaller than 12 mil slotted screens. Um, we tend to use um, uh, polyurethane decks uh, because they last a long time. And you know, you're you're looking for a processing operation that doesn't require a lot of maintenance or or a lot of uh, um, you know hands-on human hands-on. Um, you really want it to run night and day without being shut down too often. So uh, crushing is um, is generally regarded as hard work, right? Um, because it does uh, it does lend itself to more maintenance uh, than you know the the processes you know the finer comminution processes. Um, so we, we generally start with a primary crusher which sees the rock from the pit which might be as big as a metre, you know, big lumps. Um, very often there will be a, a, a large um, uh, rock breaker mounted across the crusher, whether that crusher be a primary gyratory or a, um, or a jaw crusher. Um, Gyratories are effectively inverted uh, mortar and pestles. So if you think of your home mortar and pestle and tip it upside down and put a hole in the top so you can drop the dirt in, that's, uh, that's what a primary gyratory is. Um, a jaw crusher is exactly what it, it sounds like. And, and this day and age, it's very unusual to see Blake or double toggle jaw crushers, so generally single toggle jaw crushers. Um, it, when I started out in the 70s, um, you know, double toggle jaw crushers were used on all hard abrasive rocks. Um, that's uh, no longer the case. Uh, the single toggle jaw crushers have been improved to the stage where the the jaw wear. Um, is uh, it's still nothing like as good as a as a double toggle, but we used to estimate based on uh, you know four times the wear in a single toggle, and now you're probably getting almost half the wear, um, or almost twice the wear. Uh, so effectively, uh, the single toggles have have taken over um, the jaw crushing. In applications up to about um, five million ton a year, four million ton a year seems to be the crossover now. Used to be around two million ton a year, but uh, these days we 
commonly putting jaw crushers in between four and six million ton a year, um, you know, depending on the application. And uh, gyratories come in at around four to six million ton a year. And so a lot of um, a lot of uh, projects, the, there's only one stage of crushing and that's the primary crushing. It produces a, a minus 250 millimetre product and that goes straight to a semi-autogenous grinding mill. Um, and for a long time, you know, through the um, 90s and the noughties, um, that, was the, that was very much the preferred approach. Starting from you know, the late noughties, there was a, a, a revisiting of three-stage and four-stage crushing um, because of the power um, advantages. So uh, crushing is a lower power consumer than grinding. So the, um, the sag mills will typically, um, a sag ball crush circuit will typically have a up to six kilowatt hours a ton um, disadvantage. In other words, you, you have to buy another six kilowatt hours for every ton that you put through that process compared with three stage crushing. Um, it depends on the ore, of course. Um, you know, with some ores that's not the case, but with uh, most fresh rock, um, there's a p particular power penalty associated with coarse grinding. That's um, the the primary and the secondary stages uh, still very much as they always have been. The secondary stage of crushing will typically be a, a cone or a gyratory, um, and the difference between those two is really just the the cone angle. Cones uh, for um, uh, tertiary applications, uh, gyratories are for primary and secondary crushes. You know, you can use either, um, but cones have been the most common secondary crushing uh, tool and they remain that. Okay, so um, there are exceptions. Um, if you've got um, soft, soft ores, um, you might use impact crushers um, and um, impact crushers can be primary crushers as well. Um, if you've got um, soft ores, you might use uh, sizes which are like a tooth roll crusher, and and of course in um, in um, coal industry, which is not really what we're talking about here, uh, impactors and and tooth roll crushers and um, and and even just rotary breakers, which are just like big drums. That, the rock rolls round in are very common, but for hard rock mining, um, typically a primary jaw or a primary gyratory followed by a secondary cone, um, and that if you close that on a screen, then the the resulting product from that will be typically minus 35 millimeters, um, depending on how hard you work your machines. Um, from there you go to your tertiary crushing and um, your tertiary crushers have traditionally been cones in, in our industry and you know they're looking for a, a product that will close on a 12 mil screen um, and, uh, and give you a P80 of between 8 and 10 millimetres, a P80 being the 80% passing size which is typically used in common use and calculations to to uh, describe you know the power required and various other things, the characteristic of the of the resulting product. So the the um, the thing that's changed in the last ten years uh, um, it started changing back in the nineties, but it's really changed in the last ten years is that. Uh, high pressure grinding rolls have come into play and um, a high pressure grinding roll will take a, a minus um, 35 mil product 
and grind it to bug dust, basically. Um, so the um, the high pressure HPGRs, they're called high pressure grinding rolls, um, don't like um, material that's coarser than about 50 millimetres because uh, that tends to result in breakage of their tungsten tips uh, because it, it, it actually um, uh, gets, gets caught on them.